Hey, you came back. I must be doing something right. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And today, it's July 10th. It's Wednesday. Which means we are back on course. I've got a live streaming event tomorrow, Thursday. I do this every Thursday except on holidays, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host Taylor, we go on for about an hour and a half and we're taking requests from you, the viewers. You got a stock you want us to take a look at? You got a stock you want to share? Bring it on. Drop that ticker in the comment box. I'll go over the information, Taylor will cover the chart, and we'll give you our opinion on it, whatever that's worth to you. Now, I do announce that I'm going to have this video earlier in the day. I want people to show up. Well, when I do that, people start dropping their tickers immediately, and I do go by first come, first served. So if you want your ticker looked at, please get it in early. Wherever you see that announcement show up, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, get your ticker in then. Because by the time 4 o'clock rolls around, I already have all the tickers I can handle. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time Thursdays. Every Thursdays, but the holidays. Now, before we jump into a hot penny stock, I got a couple of footnotes here I want to share with you. First off, you may have noticed in the last few videos there was a lot of clicking going on. My chair was making all kinds of noise. Why well, fix that? So you're not going to have any more clicking. The other thing I want to mention, I covered a stock the other day, Maxon, ticker M-A-X-N, Maxion Solar Technologies. And we looked at it because she was very volatile. She had a lot of volume coming in, over a billion shares in four days. And there was a battle. There was a lot of investors and there was a lot of shorters. And I said, this could be a stock we could make something on. Well, I took my own advice and I got an entry position never get everything all at once. I bought some at about 25 cents a share. Well, I lost about 25% of that investment already, which made me curious. So I went and looked at other stocks I have invested in that were big shorted stocks. I noticed something. That money gets tied up for a long time, a long time normally. And as a day trader, that's the last thing I want is my money tied up. The other thing I noticed, most of the time, my stock gets beat up. And why wouldn't it? We're volunteering to get into a stock that has a lot of opposition. We've got people in there who want the stock to fall. The further it falls, the happier they are. And here's the worst part about it. They are paid to make that stock fall. You and I have to go out and get more money to buy more shares to push that stock up. Soon as it starts to climb, they come in and push it back down and they're making money doing it. Which do you think is more probable? Who's going to win this battle, the shorters or the investors? I think the shorters are. So personally, I'm not going to be playing high shorted stocks anymore. At least that's not going to be my primary reason for getting in. And I will second think it before I get in, which means I probably won't be focusing in on stocks that have big shorts. I just don't think they're great plays for day traders, folks. All right, with that said, let's move on to a hot penny stock. Hot penny stocks are what I look for, folks. I trade penny stocks every single day. Stocks under five bucks you can find on every single market. There's lots of penny stocks out there. And I'm looking for a hot penny stock. Now, I could invest or waste my time, whichever way you look at it, going through filings after filings, press releases, looking for hot information, and hoping I can figure out what's hot or not. Actually, what I prefer to do is look at my charts. I can look at a lot of charts in a little amount of time and very quickly see if there's heat there. I can see a breakout setup. I can see a strong run. I can see big bounces. Well, when I find a chart that has heat, then I go rummaging around through that company's filings and press releases looking for a catalyst. If I can find a hot piece of information to match a hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And we do. We have got laser here. Ticker L-A-Z-R, Luminar Technologies. It was the chart that turned me on to this stock. It is an atypical breakout chart, my favorite pattern. That's when you got your 200-day SMA coming down fast with the price underneath it. Then your 200 starts to level off, giving the price a chance to start climbing, and then it cuts through that 200 and runs. That's what we're looking at right now. Now, when it comes to catalysts, oh boy, we've got a juicy catalyst here, folks, and I'm not going to get into the details right now, 
but to say that it is coming from an old piece of news. The news we're going to look at came out June 6th, but what they said then is happening now. Now is the perfect time to be looking at this company. So Luminar Technologies, she finished the day at $1.68 and she was up almost 10% today. Now this is a hot penny stock on the major exchanges. I feel comfortable with that because there's benefits. Safety, first of all and foremost as far as I'm concerned. I get taken by a lot of OTC companies that just aren't playing righteously. Up here on the major exchange, there are way too many people watching these companies and there's way too many hoops for them to be jumping through to be playing games. So I feel safer up here. Plus, we've got a lot more money and a lot more volume on the major exchange. We can trade these pre-market, after-market. There are some huge runs going on right now, pre-market, after-market. They move faster in those periods of time because there's less traders, less opposition. And of course, your transactions on the major exchange are free. So I like trading penny stocks on the major exchange. So what is Lazar all about? Well, we got nothing here. So let's jump on into the most recent news press here and get a description. They tell us here, Luminar is a global automotive technology company ushering in a new era of vehicle safety and autonomy. For the past decade, Luminar has built an advanced hardware and software AI platform to enable its over 50 industry partners. You caught that. They have 50 partners, folks, including most global automotive OEMs. From consumer vehicle programs with Volvo cars and Mercedes-Benz to technology partnerships, including NVIDIA and Mobileye, Luminar is posed to be the first automotive technology company to enable next generation safety and autonomous capabilities for global production vehicles. Now, because it is talking about the company, I'm going to dive right into this piece of news because this is what it's all about. And they're focusing in on what is happening now and the product that we are talking about. As I said, this came out June 6th. Luminar launches Sentinel software for automakers. This is a full stack software development kit that they are shipping to top automakers beginning in Q3, which is right around the corner. Today, Luminar, a leading global automotive technology company, announced it is launching Sentinel, its full stack software suite following five years of breakthrough developments in software and AI systems. The Sentinel solution enables automakers to accelerate development of advanced safety and autonomous functionality on vehicles and includes proactive safety, perception, 3D mapping, localization, simulation, and dynamic LiDAR features. The first shipments occurred this week. At the beginning of June, they started shipping these out and are planned to be delivered to top automakers in the third quarter of this year. A recent comprehensive research report by Swiss Re, one of the world's largest reinsurance companies, demonstrated that our cars equipped with Luminar LiDAR and development version of Sentinel software showed dramatic safety enhancements and a reduction by as much as 40% in accident severity. Luminar's foremost goal is improving safety. However, Luminar automakers and end consumers can capitalize on the insurance savings to be realized with the safety and damage reduction benefits of its technology. Luminar expects to monetize some of the benefits internally by launching its own packaged insurance product to automakers and end consumers. So this is going to make driving so much safer that it's actually going to lower our cost of insurance. That's a huge plus, folks. And they, too, are going to get into the insurance business and be offering some products themselves. They go on to tell us that the majority of major automakers don't currently have a software solution for next-generation assisted and autonomous driving systems. Our launch couldn't be more timely with the new NHTSA mandate for next-generation safety in all U.S. production vehicles by 2029. And as of today, we're the only solution we know of that meets all of these requirements. Folks, that's a big deal. Look, we are getting into autonomy, whether it be an EV car or a gas car, a hydrogen car, it doesn't matter. Autonomous vehicles are in everything now, and they are growing more and more. However, 
There are laws. There are stipulations. It has to work in such a fashion. Come on, you're taking your hands off the wheel and putting your life in this technology. So we have to know it's working and working well. And this company is the only one that seems to have passed this. And now that product is coming onto the market and all of these car manufacturers, if they want to get their cars out there with this autonomy driving ability, they're going to need something like this. And if this is the only one that's approved, this is going to be big folks. This is going to be huge. Now is the time to be looking at this company. Now let's go take a look at the volume for the company today. Looking pretty good. She's up about 50%. Over the last 30 days, she's been doing an average of 6.1 million shares. Today, she just crested over 9 million. Share structure for the company, kind of high. Outstanding share count is just under 350 million. And I don't have any clue what the insiders own. So I really don't have any clue what the float is, except to say it's not going to be any higher than the outstanding share count. And it could be considerably less. Market cap for Luminar. 533 million, just over a half a billion dollars. Financials, they're a mess. At first glance, they look pretty good. Now remember, we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these charts. Back in 2020, she was at 14 million and started jumping. 2021, she went to 31 million, then 40 million. And at the end of 2023, we were at $70 million. But look at her profit margin. The more money she made, the more money she's losing until she's losing more than she's bringing in. It's a horrible situation. Now, I'm figuring it's because of manufacturing. They're not making enough to make it cost efficient. Kind of like the flat screen TV when it first came out. You could get yourself a 19 inch TV for $3,000. What a deal. <laughs> Now, you can go get yourself a 60-inch TV for about $300. That's what happens when everybody starts buying them. And when you have all these car manufacturers putting them on all their cars, you're talking about millions of cars. That's going to make it cheaper to make these things, increasing the profit margin, letting them start to make money instead of just generating revenues. Take a look at the quarterlies. Well, we got the same situation going on there. They are increasing, not as strong, but they are getting stronger, but they're losing money steadily. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. Hopefully it looks better. Remembering those three zeros over here as well. Looking at cash in the bank, we got about $111 million. Total assets, just under a half a billion. And total liabilities, just under three quarter billion. So we are holding stockholder deficit here, the liability, almost $280 million. Let's go take a look at those disclosures now. Wow, look at all of those Form 4s. On June 7th, we had a whole bunch of Form 4s come out and I looked at them. Form 4s can be good news. These are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's common stock. And as investors, we're always interested if they buy them or sell them. You know, a token sign of maybe something to be aware of. Well, none of these are purchases or sales. Most of them are actually tax payments. They had to sell some shares to pay taxes. Everybody had to do that. And then a few down so let's here go take a look are at restricted something else. shares that they're getting. But there's nothing there about purchasing or sales, so there's nothing we have to really worry about there. I wanted to jump into this 10Q right here. I always like diving into 10 Qs, see what sort of information you can glean out of these things. And I've gleaned a bunch of bullets I want to share with you here. Now I'm going to have to do a little bit of scrolling, but it's going to be worth it. I am right up here at the top right now. They tell us here that the company's revenue is derived from customers located in the United States and international markets. One customer, Scale AI Inc. accounted for 69% of the company's business up to March 31st, 2024. That's one customer. Imagine if they start bringing in all these car manufacturers to buy their goods. Woohoo! We're talking big bucks here. Let's get down to the next one. As they said, they sell in North America, Asia Pacific, Europe, and the Middle East. Got some bullets down here that are kind of juicy. I know it's a ways down there. On March 18th of this year, the company completed the acquisition of EM4, a designer, 
manufacturer and seller of packaged photonic components and subsystems for industrial markets. The EM4 acquisition is expected to accelerate our strategy to package lasers, detectors, and ASICs. In the first quarter of 2024, we agreed to establish an engineering center in Zyman, China to be staffed by TPK, one of our existing contract manufacturing partners. Also in the first quarter of 2024, we successfully passed the final run at rate production audit for Volvo cars at the manufacturing facility in Mexico, our final milestone ahead of the standing standard operating procedure. I think that's what the SOP stands for. So they've hit their final milestone here with Volvo. That is exciting. Our business and revenues producing activities are organized in two operating segments, autonomy solutions and advanced technologies and services, which they call ATS. The autonomy solution segment is engaged in design, manufacturing, and the sale of LIDAR sensors, catering mainly to the OEMs in the automobile and commercial vehicle, robo-taxi, and adjacent industries. The ATS segment provides advanced semiconductors and related components as well as design, test, and consulting services to the autonomy solutions segment and to various third-party customers, including government agencies and defense contractors in markets generally unrelated to the autonomous vehicles. Three customers, Scale AI, Tesla, and Mercedes-Benz of autonomy solution segment accounted for 48%, 11%, and 10% of the company's revenues, respectively speaking, for the three months ended March 31st, 2024. And two customers, Scale AI and Mercedes Benz of autonomy solution segment, accounted for 28 and 24% of the company's revenues for the three months ended March 21st, respectively, as well. I do think I have a little more down here. All right, here's some financial information for us that we didn't get over there. Net cash provided by financing activities was $17.5 million in the three months ended March 31st, 2024. Net cash provided by investing activities of $34.4 million in the three months ended March 31st. We had cash and cash equivalents and marketable securities totaling $218 million as of March 31st, as well as a principal amount of outstanding convertible senior notes of $625 million. So, of course, they've got some debt. They've got some cash and equities. It's all normal. What we've got here is an opportunity here, folks. They are bringing on their hot new product, and they're going to bring it into the market to all of these auto car makers who are needing it. They want to propel into this autonomous vehicle sector, and they can't do it without the right gear. And there is no right gear unless it's approved by the government. It has to meet the regulations, and this is the only company doing it. So as far as I'm concerned, folks, this company is going to be hot. The chart is hot right now for a good run, but I'm looking down the road. Down in the future, isn't every car probably going to have autonomy? Don't you think? And aren't they all going to have to be safe? So I think this company is in the breadbasket of what we're looking for. Let's go take a look at that chart now. I'm ready to do some charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We're going to chart laser, ticker LAZR. This is Luminar Technologies. Now, I've got this opened up to a one-day, one-year chart. And as you can see, she has been in a serious decline the entire year. We had an impressive 52-week high almost a year ago at $8.32 when she was feeling confident, bouncing on top of the 200-day SMA. Then she lost her footing, and that was it. She never looked back, hitting a 52-week low in April of $1.21. Underneath all the SMAs here, she jumped up on top of the 50, had a huge burst of volume, had a nice jump in price, and I have no clue what happened. This was on May 8th. She then fell back down to her 200 haul, bounced off of that, and she's positioning herself on the 50 right now. Our volume has been pretty regular throughout this entire year. We don't have to worry about that. And our oscillators are looking pretty good. Our PPO has got a crossover coming up right now. Same with our MACD. She's crossing the signal line. 
Our green bars are coming into the picture, getting bigger and bigger, and our RSI has climbed from about 43 to virtually 60. Not a bad yearly chart. Let's come on down to that six-month, four-hour view. Now our high is $4.07, falling down here to $2.36 when she had a breakout attempt, and it looked pretty good. She went from $2.36 up to $3.70, and I don't blame her for trying. That $200 is almost flat there. She came back down on a flat, maybe even rising $200, bounced off it, and this should have took off. Why it didn't, I have no idea. Something yanked her right back down from $330 down to 2 bucks. She then bounced back up, beating her head on that $200 without any success, falling down to that 52-week low. Off of the low, she pushed herself up on top of the 200, has fallen back underneath it, and she is scooping around. Now, before I zoom in on current times, let's grab some SNRs, some supports and resistances. So let's see what I can see here. Um, all right, we might be able to get one right there. Yep, that one looks pretty good. All right, what I see here is we've got this hitting it right there. We got this coming down to it right there. And this is pretty much pretty even in there, sitting on it and hitting its head. That brings us to 257. Let's get another one a little bit lower here. Oh, that's a nice one. I can see this bottom hit, that bottom hit, that top hit, that top hit. That's a beautiful one at uh, about 210. Let's get a lower one here. Uh, let's see what we got here. I like that one right about there. All right, what I'm looking at is all of this here is beating its head on it. This came up here, beat its head on it. That beat its head on it. And look here, that beat its head on it. So we've got that one at about a buck 77. Now let's zoom in on what's going on over here. So we had that breakout attempt here. She got all the way up to $2.31 before coming down to a buck 30. Off of that, she broke the 200, fell back down to our 200 haul. Now I have told you about this 200 haul in penny stocks. They like to use it as a catapult. They come down to it and push off of it, not just to get a little bit higher, but to get to and through the 200. Well, we've had that happen twice here. Right here, she bounced off the 200 haul, up to and through the 200. Didn't stay there, though. Came back down. Another push while the 200 haul is blue, not purple. That means it's rising. Now she's getting an extra push. That pushed her to and through the 200. She's off and running, folks. All of our SMAs, 200 haul, 50, and 20, are all turned up and climbing, getting ready to cross that 200-day SMA. When each one of those cross, it's called a golden cross, and normally you see a push in the price from them. This is all looking tasty. She got up to that resistance of a buck 77, real close, and then pulled back, and currently she looks like she's about a buck 67, a buck 68. Let's come on down to that one hour, 20 day view. Well, you can see she was beating her head up against that 200. That tells me she's looking for an opportunity to break out. What kind of opportunity? How about a flat 200 day SMA? Here it's falling, falling, falling. She can't get up on top of it. That's a slippery slope with ice on it. Every time you get up on there, you're gonna fall back down. But once it goes flat, now you can jump and jump she did. She went from a buck 30 up to that buck 66, came back down, did a rubber ball bounce. You know, a rubber ball goes under the water and comes right back out. And when it comes out, what does it do? It jumps out of the water because of the air, right? Well, look what we got here. Boom! She jumped from a buck 39 up to a buck 56, came down, bounced off of our 200 day SMA, and she is climbing now. And look at our 200 haul way up here climbing and that is what our penny stock is sitting on she's riding on that and again getting a catapult boost jumping from 154 up to 176 and falling back down to our nine day sma that is not a fall that's a pullback pull back and land on something landed perfectly our 200 is now climbing along with all of our other smas this isn't looking bad folks not looking bad at all Oscillators, they're cooling off a little bit. 
we had a nice rip here. She's pulled back. You got to expect this to show that they're not falling except for the RSI. And in case you didn't know, the RSI is the price line. If you were to take all these bars and change them into a line, it would look exactly like that, except that's flat. This is going up and down. That's flat. You know how they take the globe and they open it up and they flatten it out so you can see the world flat? That's exactly what that is. So when the price falls, the RSI falls and vice versa, which is why everybody gets excited when the RSI is rising. Taking a look at that five day, five minute. That's a perfect chart. When you have your low bubble in this corner and your high bubble in that corner, you can't ask for anything more. She was underneath the 200 here as it was falling right in this area. She's going flat. That's when she jumped from 138 up to 156, fell down to a 200 and she's climbing that day after day, came underneath it with another rubber ball bounce. She's struggling here. She went through a whole day of struggling and then today at about 11 in the morning, she decided to take off. After dipping under the 200, she went to a buck 54 and then shot up to a buck 76. And after market is when all of this has occurred. She's fallen back down. And it looks like she's dangling in the air. And I hate that because you don't know if she's going to keep falling all the way down to that 200. So I'm going to take a peek at my 15 minute chart. Oh, that don't look too good. Let me check the 30 minute. Fingers crossed. No, she is falling right now, folks. She is dipping. So I would not be looking for a buy at this very moment. Of course, it's aftermarket. But you may want to watch this. Let's see where I think she might come down to. Yeah, well, I see she's leveling off here, folks. She fell, 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 came under her 20. She's had a push up and now she's getting thinner and thinner red bars. She may not come all the way down to here. I was thinking she could come down to 163 here and then bounce off of that. But she looks like she's turning right now. She's worth a watch, folks. But more importantly, you want to be on board because they're going to start coming out with news presses about this car manufacturer, that car manufacturer, another car manufacturer that is on board, that is getting these parts shipped to them right now. And that's going to be exciting because they're going to be putting them on thousands, tens of thousands, millions of cars. And this company is going to be selling units to all of those people. That's going to be huge money, folks. And that's what we need. They're generating revenues, but they're not generating profit. So if we can get manufacturing production costs down by making more and more of them, they're going to start making a lot of money. And they're already generating strong revenues with their other products. So I am excited. Please, folks, do some more due diligence. There is a lot more to know out there. I didn't cover half of what there is. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. <laughs> See you, folks.